When you start a collection, what happens when the collection outgrows your house? Well, yeah, I guess you build a museum because that's what they did at the Museum of Appalachia in 1969. Now, this place has grown to be quite a landmark since then, and Rob Wiles went up to check it out. When John Rice Irwin began the Museum of Appalachia back in 1969, it was sort of a matter of necessity. You see, his collection just got out of hand. As he explained in a 1988 interview, it started after an estate sale. If there was a dramatic beginning of the Museum of Appalachia and, and collecting, that was it. But because from that time on, I not only attended every old-time public auction, but I started going from door to door, house to house, and it really became an obsession. Anytime I had a day off, I was up long before daylight and uh, literally going from door to door and house to house and did that for years. Mr. Irwin wasn't alone on those trips. His daughter, Elaine, went too, even if that meant grabbing an unusual lunch from time to time. He didn't think eating was important. We thought eating was really important. And uh, so occasionally we'd stop at a little country store and there would be like these pickled eggs and this big jar. Mm -hmm. And this man with not really clean hands would stick his hand down in the jar and pull out an egg. Mm -hmm. And we would suddenly not be as hungry. <laughs> Elaine, now Elaine Myers, survived those dicey boiled eggs and is now the president of the Museum of Appalachia, which her father put together one artifact at a time. As he grew older and became more interested in history, he collected more and more artifacts along the way. And when he had time off on Saturday afternoons primarily, he would go sort of door to door and house to house and see things that uh, people had discarded, no longer used, and ask if they would mind selling them. And he would collect the history of the items. Each item has a unique history of work or family or invention. Even when the invention was doomed to fail, like the most asked about item here, this would be perpetual motion machine. During the Civil War, it was said that if someone could make perpetual motion, yeah. they would be granted a million dollars. Well, I'll be darned. This guy hid this contraption and all the pieces and parts in a cave for over 50 years. There's actually been a, an entire book uh, written about this. And if you can figure it out, would you I know. get the million dollars? Yeah, you might. Still, yeah. still, it's, I don't know. Can, <laughs> even though this is a museum about Appalachia and Appalachian people, Elaine says visitors from all over find a connection here. I think it's just a connection to our forefathers, whoever that might be. You know, a lot of times people might think, well, you know, that's not my people. I'm not from Southern Appalachia. But you see when people come through here, they connect with their own forefathers. Whether they're from this country or another country or another part of the United States, they say, you know, I remember something like this, or I remember stories that my grandparents told me, that, that kind of connection it brings to them. And so I think it makes them want to connect more with their ancestors and share stories and that kind of thing. So once you've gone through the Hall of Fame, which really is a great museum, and had your lunch at the new restaurant here, you can walk down to this village set up to show what life might have been like in Appalachia, and see people at work, oh, maybe hear some music. I think I hear some being played right now. You'll often find performers sharing traditional songs and dances. And you'll often hear the sounds of work being done, too. Work, yes, but to crass people like Jack Bly, who demonstrates the old-fashioned way to create, it hardly seems like work at all. I'll pick up a piece of steel, and I'll just beat out something that might have been done 100 years ago. And I kind of go back in time, and it really is kind of cool. Lou Ann Robinson thinks of visitors, particularly children, when she's at work. If I don't do it for the school kids, there's a chance they may never see anyone weaving on a loom. 
To Luann, the museum is on a mission to safeguard the old ways. It's keeping things safe for people to see how we used to live, where we came from, our roots, what our, our forefathers and mothers had to do to survive. Survive like the memories of grandparents, old people who originally inspired John Rice Irwin, not because they were old people, but because they were good people. The idea of being a good neighbor, of all the things they stressed, that was one of the paramount things that they talked about, you know. And being honest, it wasn't enough just to do what was legally right. It wasn't enough just to do what was morally right. It, you had to go beyond that. And I don't think that they were such good, compassionate, empathetic neighbors just because they were taught that way. I think they genuinely felt that way. A feeling you can recall and experience at the Museum of Appalachia in Norris.